this isn't morale in a normal way. Morale in this or caution this just makes you do less. You don't run away and stuff. There's nobody really to run away to. Now, if you only ever take morale, if there's an enemy unit close by, if there's no one close by or what we call proximity, the surrounding eight squares, if there's no one close by, you don't take morale. Let's say, for example, it was the white star turn, the US turn here. Now, here's how it goes. It takes one dice because there's an enemy unit close by. That's one dice. Turn units would be two dice. There's also a casualty here. That's a second dice. It rolls two dice. Every four, five, six is a fail. One fail. One fail means they lose one of their dice this turn. So their seven dice would just be now six dice. Two fails take off two dice, etc., etc. But you only do it if you start the turn with any enemy close by, whether you see them or not. Let's say the VC were doing their morale. Now the VC, there's one for an enemy unit close by. Oh, there's some tanks. That's the second unit close by. Oh dear. They've got two dead bodies, two more. And their raw is one more. Now, every four, five, six is bad news. Oh, two bad news. So originally every unit has seven dice. Being raw, they only get six dice. And the two fails takes two more. For this turn, they've only got four dice, which restricts what they do. If they try and do a lot, they might find that they fail and ruin the whole turn for the rest of the VC units. If I were this VC commander, I try and disappear. Now, the white star can't do it, but the VC can. A three for four or six, they can just take them off the table. Yeah, success. Take them off the table. They're out of harm's way. And we carry on from there. So this morale or caution is only taken when you start the turn next to an opponent. Whether you've got deads or not doesn't matter. So when you start the turn near to people, it makes you more cautious. Or well, should make you more cautious. And every fail on a four, five, six takes one off. The reason it's a four, five, six is because if a player complains, oh, I get low all the time, say, well, your morale must have been wonderful. If you get high all the time, the morale's going to be worse. It's the psychological part. And that's the morale or the caution test. Artillery time. Now, these are just search and destroy operations, but they still have access to artillery. The VC don't have any access to artillery. If they were NVA here, and it's a slightly different game, then yes, they can have artillery. But this is the standard search and destroy game. Now, the artillery probably just a single battery of 105 mils, probably not even 155s, but some 105s or maybe some mortars or something like that. Now, here's how artillery works. It's a difficult action, so you must get a five or six to call it in. So let's say the command squad's got, I don't know, five dice left, and he wants a five or six. There we go. Artillery arrives. It's only once per turn. Now, artillery consists of three squares of high explosive. Don't worry, I'm not placing them just yet. Now, once they're placed, and they've got to be placed on something that's visible, you can't just be speculative and say, I'm going to shoot it over the top of some jungle. The VC gets a chance to deviate it. If they score a one, it pivots 90 degrees on an end of the VC choosing. So it could pivot that way. That's 90 degrees. Or it could pivot that way. That's 90 degrees. If they score a two, it pivots around the center by 90 degrees. There we go. Now, in this situation, the white stars called in artillery there's two VC squads here. I don't want to hit my own men, but let's just give it a try. I think I'll risk it and put the one, two. It must always be three. You don't get choice to do two or one. It's an artillery strike and it could get horribly wrong. Now, the VC player rolls a dice. Five. There's no deviation. You carry out the artillery hits and see what that does. If, for example, the VC player rolled a one... Don't forget, only the VC can deviate it. The White Star places it. By one, 90 degrees, they could swing it round there. Of course, their own squad would be hit, but so would this squad of uh, White Star in the open, which would be good. 
or the VC player could swivel it the other way. That far one could swivel it this way and have no effect whatsoever. If you're hit by artillery, you get what's called hammered. You have to go down, you lose two dice next turn, there's all sorts of troubles. Artillery will only be called in once per turn by the White Star. It's a difficult action, you do five or six. Of course, if you start killing peasants and that, that always goes against the White Star. They're always reported back as White Star massacres. But it can be quite useful to hammer down some VC, because once the VC lose a couple of dice off their six and maybe you've got a morale problem as well, you can almost stop them doing stuff, which would be really good. But the danger is it might hit your own people, so do be very careful with artillery. And it's a three square, always a line of three, not a triangle, but a line of three. On a one, it swings 90 degrees, VC choose from either end, 90 degrees, or perpendicular. On a two, it swivels around the centre, 90 degrees. And that's roughly how artillery works. At the end of the game, there's a victory point system. Now, none of this is kept secret. You don't do it to the end of the game. There are three columns. You can either be a VC player, an NVA player, or white star player. Now, first of all, let's look at the VC. You get 25 points just for turning up. Well, well done, VC. Two points for each village square that white star did not search. Also, two points for each white star raw base killed. Three points for an average base killed, or six if you kill a tank, three for killing a carrier, that'd be an M113, uh, two for a dead gun truck, five if you knock down a gunship or a Kazivak. I've not covered that in this talks, but they exist. Uh, one for dead peasant, you VC gain points for dead peasants. If you kill four or more peasants, you get another D6 for a massacre. Destroying a white star unit is another four points, and that's about it. Now the white star, there's completely different. They get only one point for each dead VC. So I'm going to win the game just by shooting VC. Four points for destroying a VC unit. Here's the best part for them down at this bottom right hand corner. Now, if there's a low value cache and they destroy it, they get 2d6 for that with a reroll. If it's a high value, they get 2d6 if they destroy it, or 4d6 if they keep it for the end of the game. Now the number one, which is the very best thing, like a local commander or a little print press or something, 5d6. So you need to find the stuff. Now one more thing I just mentioned at the very end here is at the back of the book, sorry, front of the book, there's a battle sheet. Once again, it's downloadable. That's why it's black and white. You download that from the website. This is all the writing for the whole game. You list the scenery you chose, um, what you'd like to do, the sequence for setting up. Now the countdown goes to 30. 30, countdown all down to one. Every turn, the VC player can take off one, two, or three. And every white star turn, they can take off one, two, or three. So let's say it's the end of a white star turn. The white star player might say, mm, I'm not doing very well, I need a bit more time. I'll just take off one. The VC player might say, um, yeah, I'm doing quite well so far, but I'm wondering when we get shot to pieces, I'll take off a three, etc., etc." <coughs> Excuse me. So after the points are taken off, there's 30 points in total. If everyone takes off threes, you only get five turns each, but it averages out to about seven turns each. And the other bits on here is a little listing about a uh, helicopter gunship endurance, how long it stays on the table, special artillery liaison, all little bits and pieces. And that's how the game is set up. There's all sorts of bits on it. As I say, this is downloadable, costs nothing. Also in the rule book is the firebase assaults, NVA company fighting, uh, the Montagnards. They're all different scenarios. They're not all like this. The same basic mechanisms, but they're not like this. They are different. These rules cover Vietnam. I did they successfully translate World War II stuff like that because everything's different. The rules are written just for Vietnam. That's what they're for. Anyway, thanks for having a watch. And on the website, there's all sorts of free bits and pieces. 
and you can obviously email in questions and the like. But lovely set of rules. We've enjoyed playing them. 2017, so this video, 2024, which is uh, what, another seven years on. Okay, thanks very much then. Bye for now.